Hey gang, Masada Ayub here with the Green Force Tactical Gang. The gun we're playing with is an advanced copy of the Walther PPS M2. The PPS has been out for a while. It's one of the most popular of the Slim 9s, the thin bodied, single stack, 9mm pistols. This one, of course, is striker fired. And what distinguishes it from the original is the American style uh, magazine release. Uh, we'll show you later, but on the original PPS, you have the little flipper down here that could be activated with trigger finger or thumb, but just wasn't habituated into the psyche of the American shooter. Walther noticed when they went M2 on their PPQ pistol that sales soared uh, solely because now people could reload it the way they were used to. So we'll take this today and see how it runs. The Green Force guys told me they've got about 300 rounds through it. Uh, as I load, forgive me if I look like Pierce Morgan having tea with a queen, but with these little short butt guns, if you're holding it with your hand on here and you smack a magazine in, what's going to happen is you're going to get a nasty blood blister or maybe even a cut on the fingers. And more to the point, it's going to fail to seat fully and you'll end up with a click instead of a bang. We're at seven yards, just going to see where the thing hits to start with before we do any accuracy testing. Now the same is true when we release the magazine. Notice when we hit it here, if I have a grasp, the magazine's not going anywhere. The reason is it's been trapped by the little finger in the heel of the hand. So you've got to do a little one of these with any of these subcompact pistols. It's not unique to the Walther. We'll close the slide, come on down, and it looks like it left the factory pretty much shooting where it looks. I was aiming for the letter A. Got a decent group there, so for me it's going a tad to the left. We'll run it back to 25 yards and see what the accuracy looks like there, both uh, from the precision point of view and grouping and the field accuracy point of do the bullets go where, where you're looking. Okay, here's a new out of stock uh, Walther PPS in its original configuration. This is the magazine release I was talking about. The downward, downward pressure drops the mag. It could be done with the trigger finger or it can be done with the thumb. With the Model 2, we've got the American style magazine release. Now one here. feature that you have on this gun, on the original, as you press the trigger, the cocking indicator starts to come back to the rear. When you're holstering, particularly if you holster appendix, it's always a good idea to be riding the hammer of a hammer-fired gun or holding the slide forward on a striker-fired gun. On a Springfield Armory XD series, for instance, you'll have the grip safety here, which now on this grass will be activated and gives you one more safety net against unintended discharge. If something, finger, clothing, keys in the front of your belt, interdicts the trigger. Because of this element here, the thumb can feel that that cocking indicator is starting to come back and give a felt index to the shooter, stop, something really bad is happening here. We have the same in effect on the M2. Okay, we're at a measured 25 yards from the target. Uh, the bench is concrete, the rest is a Caldwell matrix, and what we're going to do is do a five shot group with each of three different loads. I like to use different brands and the most popular different bullet weights in the caliber. We're starting with a very popular training load, American Eagle from Federal, uh, 9 mil 115 grain full metal jacket. Because the wrists have to be kind of bent and broken to work off this angle, you're going to see much more muzzle rise from the bench than you'd see in uh, normal shooting with a solid stance. Okay, we'll 
we'll go down and uh, measure that and see how it looks. A little high and left. I'm going to call this long, and that's going to be right at three inches. We've got approximately a three inch group I was holding here on the red dot. So we're hitting a wee bit high. That's three, it'll be about an inch and three quarters. Yeah, we're, uh, we're centering a good three inches high with that particular load. Maybe. When we go with the one, I think I'll do the 147 next. The reason is the 147 grain generally shoots higher than the others. So we have already uh, marked these. And I'll tell you what, I think I'll six I'll go six o'clock hold on this one. You were here? Yeah, um, I was on the red dot for that. Okay, the next load we're using is the Nosler match grade 124 grain jacket at hollow point. It's an expensive load, but the accuracy it delivers, uh, most folks feel it's worth the money if they're serious about accuracy in this caliber. The, I had been going to use the 147 grain and then immediately brain farted back to my original plan and used 124 grain match. Point of aim was here, but we still have four in the black and one just outside. Now we'll measure these uh, later for the record. When, when I'm testing personally, the, five, the whole five shot group gives me an idea of what am I likely to be able to do with this gun from a solid rest, if I'm able to keep my cool and, you know, control pressure. Because here, obviously, except for the camera, there's no pressure on. The best three, if you don't have a machine rest uh, adaptable to that particular gun, the decades have taught me that factors out enough unnoticed human error that when we've done the test side by side, the five shot groups from the ransom rest will generally equal the best three that were done handheld, assuming the shooter himself has not, you know, felt the shot go awry. Uh, Steve, what do we have here for the uh, the overall group size? This one is going to be four and a quarter. Best three will be so the best three and two inches is telling me that is probably what this particular gun is going to be able to do in, you know, steadier hands than the old feeble guys here. People ask, why do we do this at 25 yards? It's, uh, it's common on the internet or a lot of the gun magazines. If it's a small pistol, test it at seven yards. I've seen them test it at five yards. The history of it is never on the street has one bad guy shooting at you from the other side of the parking lot looked at the other bad guy and said, hey Spike, uh, the kid's only got a pocket gun, this ain't fair, let's get closer and make it easier for him to shoot us in self-defense. Today, more than ever, with the threats against our nation from ISIS and the, the rogue jihadi, there's a risk that you carrying your gun in public are going to be the only person there who can interdict the next mass shooting. Getting within seven yards may not be the optimal plan. It's always good to know what your gun can do at a, a more traditional distance. And in pistol shooting, 25 yards seems to have become that traditional distance uh, just through the, the popular culture and the police culture with a defensive handgun. We'll go next to the 147 grain subsonic. Third load we're going to be running is a 147 grain subsonic. This is the Winchester Wind Clean. It's about the most accurate of the uh, low toxicity, uh, low lead loads uh, that we've found in the 9mm. The 147 grain subsonic has been increasingly popular as a police and self defense load since about 1988. 
we have found they generally shoot a little bit higher than other loads in the same gun. We'll see what happens with this one. Looks to me like it kind of likes the 147, but we'll go down and take a closer look. Well, folks, I think we have a, uh, a preferred flavor for this particular gun. Point of aim was here at 6 o'clock. It's a decently controllable trigger. Steve. It's about two and seven eighths. Yeah. What are the best three looking like? Probably yeah, these up probably here. Probably going to be these up here, I guess. It's uh, inch and three eighths. Well, there you have it. The the conventional wisdom from the firearms press is four inch groups at twenty five yards are acceptable service pistol accuracy with a full-size 9mm or similar. I think that's kind of generous, but here in a pocket-size 9mm, literally pocket-size, we are certainly exceeding that, particularly if you look at the best three from the handheld bench position as being your, your best indicator of the inherent accuracy of the machine and the ammunition. We'll get over now and do a little bit of fun shooting and see how it works uh, standing up on your hind legs the way you'll be doing it in real life. Weak-hand, limp-wristed. We'll be playing some Barry Manilow music in the background. Almost. Yeah, plate. Hi. Bounce back. You wanted, yeah. You want to get a picture? Oh, it's fine. I was just wondering, wondered if you wanted a picture of where the ejection pattern goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to leave a little red mark there, John. Oh, it's not hot, mass. Of course, tactical holster and competition, right? Oh, yes. How's yes, I have. Only one match with it, but a USPSA match. I shot limited minor. Worked great. Uh, it, it holds the gun nice and solid. It's got a good drop. All the clearance for fingers that I talked with Chad about a long time ago, oh, never touched it. One of the few polymer holsters, nylon, whatever, that I did not put on a belt sander or Dremel tool or something. 
Everything's right there. The drop is perfect. Um, I see you're wearing up the daily carry too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it 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 affords you a nice good grip, very quick and easy to get at the gun. But yet, it if you look, it holds the gun in solidly to the body. You know, it keeps everything tucked in tight so you're not printing too much. Uh, just a very very comfortable holster to wear all day, and very easy to you know. It just works for what it's designed for concealed carry but yet it'll work for competition also cool yeah this is basically my daily rig anymore this this holster this gun one magazine on the other side and anything else i'm gonna have to grab a shotgun cool. <laughs> so what is that finish on there chad what what version of camo is that that is the hex cam i believe that's either specter or wasteland i can't remember there's three different versions of the, of the heck or of uh, the hex cam um just came available a few months ago, and it's actually one of our top selling patterns. Mm -hmm. People it, really a dig sharp it. Looking holster. Yeah, it is. I mean, it it was funny on the uh, at the match. I was shooting basically a stock gun and limited, so I got a lot of comments on you're the only guy shooting a real gun, but damn, that's a good looking holster, also. <laughs> nice. So, now the one critique I've got uh, when I've written about the holster is, okay, you're the guy that tells us don't go on a court and have to explain why we have a Punisher skull on the back of our Glock. <laughs> yep. About the skull thing. <laughs> so can they order it without that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, when you uh, order a custom holster on our website, you can specify what color skull you want or no skull if you don't want one at all. No, I did enough of that last week. I neglected to mention earlier, we just weighed the trigger on a Lyman digital trigger scale from Brownells, and the average trigger pull weight is 6.925 pounds. Uh, we found it very consistent. Got a light take up, a smooth little roll, and a pretty predictable break. The modifications we see on the M2 PPS are remarkably similar in terms of grip stippling, magazine release placement, etc that they did on their M2 version of the PPQ. It made the gun hugely more popular in the American market. And there's every reason to believe it'll make the PPS that much more popular here too. We've run probably 175 rounds through it today with zero malfunctions. The Green Forest guys told me they had at least 300 rounds through it before it got here with zero malfunctions. We, it, it runs upside down, it runs from a limp wrist, and the little guy shoots like a much bigger pistol. Uh, I'd give it a thumbs up.